Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy Bond. I'm one of the organizers of Inga Demo along with Sean and Elizabeth and I'm here today to talk to you about brainstorming and ideation for your Inga Demo games. So let's get started. So the idea of what we're doing here is based on kind of two concepts and the first one comes from Linus Pauling. He says the best way to have a good idea is to have lots of ideas and throw out all the bad ones. And it turns out that uh, he was pretty good at having good ideas. He was actually the only person to have by himself won both the Nobel Prize in Chemistry and the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, and so he's a pretty impressive guy. Um, and the real core here is we want to come up with lots of different ideas so you have lots to pick from so that you can create a great game. The other thing that we're talking about is from this book called The Medici Effect by Franz Johansson. Johansson's core idea is that the innovation and stuff that happened in the Renaissance in Europe was really caused in a lot of ways by the intersection of Eastern and Western cultures due to the increased trade because they were sending boats um, back and forth at that time. So we're going to take that and we're going to take some of his ideas on innovation and we're going to apply that to our brainstorming for games. So what do I mean by his ideas on uh, innovation? The two kinds of innovation he talks about are first, incremental or directional innovation. This is just uh, making something a little bit better. One of the great example of this is, say, Pentium chips in the 1990s. They started out rather small, and then they just constantly sort of made them slightly larger and slightly faster. And so at that point, you got like a, you know, a two times increase in speed every, say, 18 months uh, following Moore's Law, but really, like, there was no huge jump. Right? So it's easy to convince people this will work, it's easy to get money for this kind of thing, um, and it's predictable, but the con is you don't, you don't have anything revolutionary, you don't have anything like just amazing that happens as a result of this. The second kind of innovation is intersectional innovation. This is the combination of two different ideas, and I'll give you an example of that, I'll give you a couple of them. So first, people like collecting things. What if we combine that idea with another idea, which is people like card games? And uh, Richard Garfield did this and created the first collectible card game, Magic the Gathering. And this led to an explosion of other collectible card games. It was innovative enough that it actually created a whole genre of games. Here's another example. People love real-time action games. And people like strategy games, turn-based strategy games. Well, in 1992, Westwood Studios decided to combine these two ideas into the first real-time strategy game, Dune 2. And again, this led to a huge explosion and a new genre of games. And then much later, some players of Warcraft 3 said, well, we really like real-time strategy, but what if we could focus on only one hero at a time? And that led to MOBAs, like Dota and League of Legends. So, taking this idea, we can see that the pros are you can create something really new and exciting. And the, the only real con to intersectional innovation is it's really difficult to convince people that, uh, that you're going to be successful. People won't really believe it until they see it. So how does this factor into brainstorming? Now what we're going to do is base our brainstorming and ideation on this concept of intersectional innovation. This has worked for me in groups as large as 100 people and as small as just me by myself working on my own games. And it's got five steps. Those steps are expansion, collection, collision, rating, and discussion. I'm going to go through each one of those. So expansion first. Expansion is about building as many different ideas as you can and not censoring. So we're going to start with some sort of core theme or core idea of what you want to make. We've not given you a core theme in this Inga demo. You can create, you know, sort of start with whatever you want. You're going to create as many ideas as possible around it and don't censor at all in this phase. You just want to expand a bunch of ideas. Here's an example. This is, uh, Euroboros was uh, the Global Game Jam theme several years ago, and I just expanded a whole bunch of things around it. I did some stuff off of snakes, some stuff off of circles and wheels, some stuff off of cycles, some things off of the Red Dwarf television show, because Robros was an interesting uh, symbol in there. And then, after I'd done this for a while, I moved on to step two, collection. So in collection, you want to take all of those things that you wrote down on the whiteboard and put each one on a 3x5 note card or post-it note or something like that. You know, you can really sort of pick whatever you want to write it down on. These are idea cards, and it represents each of the things that you wrote down in the previous phase. And here's an example of tons of them that I wrote down from the previous one. I wrote down everything regardless of whether I thought it was a good or bad idea. Again, no censoring at this phase. Now first, I'm going to take a quick aside here and talk about 
bad jokes. Okay, so there's two lithium atoms walking along, and one of them says to the other, hey, Phil, I think I lost an electron back there. And so Phil says, really, Jason, are you sure? And Jason says, yeah, man, I'm positive, right? It's a terrible joke. Another one, uh, hey, did you hear about the fire at the circus? It was intense, right? So why are these bad jokes still kind of funny and kind of pleasurable even though they're awful? And the answer is that they are another form of intersectional innovation. So basically you get your mind thinking in one direction and you're forced to make a connection between that and something unrelated. And that connection is pleasurable to us as human beings. We perceive it as humor. We also perceive it as the eureka moment when you have a great idea. It's in many ways the same sort of feeling.